got to go all over with it, but we've got to emphasize certain areas. Now this will make more sense when I've actually finished this. So you have to bear with me, and I'm showing you it in its entirety because uh, I can then break off and do the remaining fur at the back there, and you'll know how it was done. Okay, now when you get down to here, this is when it's very dark, and you won't be able to see, if, although you can see the difference now between the two, when we finish the background here, this will be become as one, and you'll hardly discern this area at all. And it's so dark, and it's impossible to appreciate how dark it's going to be until we get the background on uh, now, because of this added bonus that we've got. Terrific. Now, this is where it gets a bit startling. It's when we can use the black for the stripe. Now, because we've got the undercolour, what that black looks like is actually a very, very dark brown. Reddish brown. Bit there going in, and then this is the stripe behind it. That's not going to show up as I said until we finish. And then, what we can do then, which is really exciting, is we can put just a little bit of black on this darker edge there, and we get that lovely tone. black stripes put in. Now what I'm going to do now is going to use three colours now to put everything together. What I mean by that is the darker one which is 283 I'm going to use to just make this a little stronger and darker at the back. Even though it looks as though it's pretty dark it won't be anywhere near dark enough when it comes to putting the background on as I've said before. So Whilst I'm doing it, I'm still conscious of the fact that more colours need to go on. Now right just there, it's at its deepest. So I come back, but I'm not actually going to put the white against that edge. But everywhere else, we will have fairly solid. And that's where we need the dark, stronger colour. Straight in then with that stronger colour here. Now, this is 273 grey. And we've got to do, we've got to try to imagine that that hair here is going across the top of that. So, what we do is we gradually decrease that as we come towards the edge of the ear. And that then is pulled out. Bring it right up to there. I'll be putting the white back in again, so if you do overdo the grey, it won't matter too much. Now, with an area like this, you've got to pick out the colours. And what I'm doing now is picking up the white that I see. It's always a question of chicken and egg. What do you do first, the stripes or the, or the, uh, the fur around them? Well, uh, what decides that is the colour itself, the strength of colour. And so what I've done here is I've already put, you can just see these faint marks, I've already put where the lightest colour is, which is the white. So that will go on first. See how much control you have when you've got that sharp point. Now, even an eye as small as this will need quite a lot of adjustment to it before I finished. OK, 
Okay, now the important bit is the round there. What we do, the, the light in the eye was quite large compared with what it is now because you can then close in on it. Can you see that? That. Now the other side. This is a tricky, tricky one. Okay, now the, the eye itself. Once again we close in on the, the light. And that will go down there. I can do that later. Okay, now I'm, go now I'm going with 189, which is the colour I used in there to start with, just to put some colour on the, the tongue. These are shadows that are coming in. And there's another shadow there I've got to deal with here. Just there. That was 182. That was 175. And that's going to be very dark in there in a minute. I should do. And we're going to be coming back over here in a little later on. Of a stripe creeping in there. It's not much. We just need to go to black and 2A3 and then uh, white just to tidy it up. Certainly the better, the more random you can make this, the better.